Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review the new ASUS Rogue Rapture GT6 gaming mesh system. It is a Wi-Fi 6 system. It is tri-band, which means it has three bands, a 2.4 and two 5 gigahertz band. And I'm gonna do my full-on speed test in wired and wireless backhaul and range test using my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, and a combination of my Pixel 7 Pro and Galaxy S23 Ultra, which are my Wi-Fi 6E devices. It supports the new expanded Uni4 Spectrum, which is basically in the 5.9 gigahertz range. And essentially in a nutshell, they're kind of using that to increase your wireless backhaul performance essentially, because it's going to use that portion of it. Now, just as a heads up, due to regulatory restrictions, the expanded Uni4 Spectrum and the 160 megahertz band may be unavailable in the five gigahertz band in some regions and countries. And really in order to get the full speeds and performance out of this thing, you should have at least Wi-Fi 6 devices. Granted, this thing is backwards compatible with Wi-Fi 5 and before as well. Advanced Wi-Fi helper tip. So these things are usually pretty easy to set up. You are supposed to set it up close to each other, I think within three meters of each other. Uh, for initial setup, then you would move the secondary node. So, and I do believe both of these are routers. So this thing is very pretty in my opinion. Join the Republic for those who are, oh, for those who dare. I, I thought that was R. Okay, Republic of Gamers, so yeah, Rogue Wi-Fi 6. So it looks all nice and pretty. 2.5 gigabit port, three other gigabit ports. We have a USB 3.0, which typically means that you can share so you could basically get an external hard drive, plug it into this thing, and the network can actually access that. Now, I think I've done that with the ASUS XT8 a year or two years ago. I've tested that out. And then you have the power switch basically just on and off and the power port. And as a frame of reference, I have my ASUS ET8 here, which is a Wi-Fi 6E mesh system. So in terms of ports, they're pretty much identical, honestly. And so this is basically the size. So this thing is a little bit bigger. It does look cooler. And I also have my ASUS ET12 Pro. And yeah, so obviously the ET12 Pro is bigger and they both kind of have this a very different style of looks. I really like the way the ET12 looks by the way. Yeah, so, and this is really just like a size comparison just so you guys get a rough idea of what this looks like and the et12 pro is definitely on the bigger side of things okay so this is also a router same exact thing and in the same network it basically acts as a node which is typical for pretty much any mesh system okay stop call us if you have problems asus setup now something to note about asus so asus uh, one of the good things about asus is that they have free parental controls and on top of that um, they pretty much have the most options from any mesh system that I test. AC to DC and good to go there. So this is what it looks like and it is 100 to 240 volts. Same exact thing. Yeah, two of those. And we have an ethernet cable with cat 5 e which means it supports up to gigabit speed. So if you're running something faster than gigabit speeds, I would recommend using uh, cat 6 or, or really just start just using cat 7. It's been over two weeks since I've been using this as my main mesh system and this thing performs. So I do have to mention something though. So initially when I set it up, super easy to set up using the ASUS router app. Everything automatically connects because what I typically do is I use my same SSID and password and they're both case sensitive. So when I do that, all my devices automatically connect to it, especially in my case because I'm changing routers all the time. Uh, it's it's crazy. So when I did that, some of my IoT devices, Internet of Things, so basically some of my smart home devices were having trouble connecting to this. So I did a little bit of research and it turned out that all I had to do was disable Smart Connect. Now what Smart Connect does is it combines the 2.4 gigahertz with the 5 gigahertz band. So it creates one SSID where both devices could connect to that. Now the interesting thing is when I disabled that, I still kept because you could individually name your 2.4 and individually name your 5 gigahertz. 
So when I did that, I actually s still left them the same name because I didn't want to change the name. And then when I did that, everything just worked. No drops, nothing. Starting with the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast any mesh system or router is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So whatever you're paying for monthly to your ISP, your internet service provider, that's what you're gonna be capped at, assuming the router itself can even go that fast, which in my case, this absolutely can. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So when I'm hooked up via ethernet to this thing with my computer, I can get to those speeds, no issues. However, Wi-Fi devices are typically a different story. I got some pretty good speeds with the Wi-Fi 6 device and better speeds with the Wi-Fi 6E device. So these are kind of in the typical range of what I expect. This one actually did a little bit better in the uploads than I typically get. Now to find out the true performance of this mesh system, you need to do a local speed test. And the way you do that is you make your computer into a local speed test server which is what I did, and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router, and this gives me its true performance because I'm no longer relying on my ISP or the public speed test server. And I've actually recently done a video on this on how to set this up, and in fact, in the video, I was actually testing it with this exact mesh system. In the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I did the same exact thing where this guy sucked it up to my server, except when I'm doing my testing, I'm doing it off the secondary one, and it's either wirelessly talking to this guy or via ethernet talking to this guy, depending on which backhaul I'm using. And that's where I wrote down all those numbers. Single router configuration, Wi-Fi 6 did way better, both for download and upload, and Wi-Fi 6E was just shining. I mean, this thing is absurdly fast. Now, the crazy thing is that even though this is a Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, so this actually does not have a 6 gigahertz band, which is the dedicated Wi-Fi 6E band, and even my Wi-Fi 6E devices connect to the 5 gigahertz band, and even with that, I got these crazy fast speeds. And the funniest part is that this is actually faster than some Wi-Fi 6E mesh systems. Now for wired backhaul performance, these are the numbers representing the secondary one. Now, you'll notice for Wi-Fi 6, it did amazingly well, basically the same as a single router configuration. However, Wi-Fi 6E did drop to just under gigabit speeds. The reason for this is because there's only one fast 2.5 gigabit port on this thing. So if it had two 2.5 gigabit ports on each, then I would get the same numbers even on the secondary one. When we get to wireless backhaul performance, this is where most mesh systems tend to suffer a bit, or some suffer a lot more than others. Some actually perform really well, and this is definitely in the performs really well category because there is essentially no difference between connecting this via wired or connecting this via wireless. And that's probably also because of it's using that Unifor spectrum. Now range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, a lot of other walls and stuff, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So 20 feet away, there is hardly a drop in performance, both for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside and still get crazy speeds. At 100 feet, it's still flying and then it does slow down, but it goes all the way up to 350 feet. As far as range, this thing is a performer. Now for setup and configuration, you'll notice that one of these has a sticker on it and it basically says, I'm the main one, start with me. So you use the blue port to hook up to your modem and you use your ASUS app, the ASUS router app on your iOS device or on your Android device and you follow the instructions. And then this guy, again, during setup has to be within three meters or so. Okay, so super simple, once it's set up, you move this to you know wherever you wanna put it, 40 feet, 50 feet away or so, something reasonable, it'll tell you. And once all that's done, you're good to go. Now the ASUS router app and the ASUS web interface they have an insane amount of options, especially the web interface. Now on top of that, this thing has some additional gaming options uh, and because it's a gaming mesh system. But right off the bat, even without using any of those gaming options, because of the wireless performance of this thing, you, you're gonna be fine. So even without setting, because uh, they have like a, a one touch for a mobile gaming experience to enhance that. And then they have some additional options 
on the web interface where you could choose the game, the port, and all this other stuff. So if I wanted to click blue, it takes a second, changes it right there. And if I refresh the page on the router, it should pick it up that now it's set to blue. So doing that and boom, shows up as blue. So in the camera, it looks a little bit lighter than it does in real life. So in real life, it's a little, it's closer to what the actual color is. So you get a whole bunch of different colors, you know, different color options, whatever you want. So you could set the color and I'll stay this color. You can also do patterns. So you can do a breathing pattern where, as you could see, it does a breathing pattern. Now, I'm not going to say the breathing pattern is super fluid, but it's pretty good for considering there are basically little LEDs there. And you could do the wave, as you guys could see here. So I'm not going to say it's perfect, but the fact that you could control it is pretty awesome. And marquee, and basically you have a whole bunch of options you want to do. I personally like the standard color, and I just basically pick a color and then just choose that as the option but again you have a lot of options you can also do a gradient if you want to do that again pick whatever color you want evolution and as you could see it's doing that and then you can also pick the rainbow if you want to pick that as well so it's going to oscillate between the different colors or you could just turn it off so whatever you want to do, those are the options. Again, you have the same thing through the ASUS router app. Right off the bat, I'm going to say this is a very good mesh system for anyone with internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. Whether you're using wired or wireless backhaul, it doesn't really matter. And if you want some really good range and a ton of options. So the only thing to note is that if your internet speeds are greater than gigabit, then the secondary one will basically be capped to gigabit speed. So do keep that in mind. Aside from that, if your internet speeds are up to gigabit, this thing is phenomenal. Wired or wireless, doesn't matter. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I am trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you guys for everything. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.